The first thing is fire as a metaphor. Throughout the book, there are a few extended metaphors, and one of them is fire. So fire is used um, by Golding as a metaphor uh, for a number of reasons, really. Um, there's a couple of things going on in this chapter, but throughout the whole book, fire is a symbol of the boy's connection to human civilization, because their signal fire is what connects them to the outside world and gives them hope of rescue. So the idea is as the fire slowly dwindles and goes out and is not even um, important anymore, their connection with civilization is, is sort of seeping away. And you know in the last video I talked about one of the major themes of the book being this kind of uh, innate savagery in mankind. Fire is also used though um, to sort of mirror the um, process of early human development on the earth because if you think of the sort of caveman uh, type sort of uh, historical image of creating fire and then after fire comes some kind of uh, control and government which is also you you know seen in this idea of you know the conch and the meeting and that kind of thing so fire is a metaphor throughout and it does change at times there's a a little uh, Prometheus link later in the stealing of fire but at this point it is a symbol of their desire to be rescued and in that it's a symbol and a metaphor of how they are still um, civilized they still have this civilization in them um, and part of that civilization is this inherent desire to have rules um, it's, a, it's quite funny, isn't it? Because Ralph at the beginning is kind of like in chapter one, wow, we're on an island and there are no adults and I can do whatever I like. And yet by chapter two, there's this almost excitement. Um, well, it is excitement to actually have rules. So, uh, you know, they say we'll have to have hands up like at school. We'll have rules, he cried excitedly, lots of rules. And this then mirrors, you know, going on from the the creation of fire, early human development on the earth to having a sort of uh, government almost. And that government is developed with the conch shell, which is a symbol of this idea of democratic freedom and equality. So uh, democracy is essentially or supposedly established where everybody is equal, everybody has equal say, because basically if you've got the conch, you get to speak no matter who you are. But straight away this is undermined because Ralph actually decides who gets to hold the conch and therefore the freedom of the island is decided by an authority. Now Ralph uh, seems to be a, a good leader but the implication that Golding's message here is that democracy or supposed democracy still depends on its leaders for justice. So a true democracy is still going to be led by someone and again it's all a critique of politics you know very very cleverly so they establish the rules and as i said throughout this book there's a constant battle between what golding felt was the innate savagery of mankind and the need therefore for rules and regulations and government and police and all the rest of it to stop us as humans from being evil and I talked in the last video about how that even links to Adam and Eve and this kind of uh, sin being uh, uh, inside of us and, and that kind of thing. So they establish these rules but we also see the slow but gradual dehumanization and the lack of civilization. Now one of the things that makes people civilized is language and having uh, a language is something that's you know an important part of civilized life and we already see that in the in the words Sam and Eric in chapter 2 are now shortened to Sam and Eric and soon will become one long word Sam and Eric and this kind of language is very interesting to look at the words and the vocabulary that the boys on the island use because it's becoming more and more primitive and shorter. And we'll see in later videos that, you know, by the end, Ralph talks in these incredibly short, blunt sentences. So the fact that this is a, a language analysis point, Sam and Eric in chapter one, by chapter two has become what you can see on the screen, Sam and Eric. And it's just this kind of language used to symbolize, to reflect 
how they are losing their sort of civilized behavior. Despite their desires for rules, they're becoming more and more primitive. And as I said, there's this innate savagery in the characters, which is seen here where Jack snatched the glasses off Piggy's face. And there's no need for it, this aggression. There just seems to be inside of these boys a nastiness which can't be explained. Uh, interestingly, I haven't got a slide on this, there's some intertextuality in the novel in this chapter. Um, they realise, you know, oh, we're on this island, it's going to be great, and they talk about some titles, Treasure Island, Swallows and Amazons, Coral Island. And these are three books about being on a deserted island. But Golding is criticising these books. He felt that they were too idealistic, too, you know, sweet. Like, oh, we'll all have a lovely time and get on well together. And again, Golding's message is that that's not reality. If you, I mean, Golding honestly believed that if you put a group of people onto an island, they will do bad things because the only thing stopping them from doing bad things is government and control and that sort of thing. Um, so although those books are mentioned, uh, they're not... Uh, you know, what's going to happen in this story. Then the beginning, the first example of animal imagery in the books. Um, there are about 10 or 12 times in this book uh, where Golding uses a simile to describe the boys as being like animals. And you'll notice this if you've done Of Mice and Men, that John Steinbeck does the same with Lenny. Um, this continual use of language and animal imagery is, is there to highlight how the uh, the boys are becoming animalistic and I believe how the writer Golding believes that humans are animalistic and you know just like will revert to an animalistic behavior without that control uh, in their life. We also see that names are starting to go out the window so Jack calls Piggy and Piggy obviously isn't even his real name to begin with but now calls him Fatty. Sam and Eric, their name is, you know, morphing. And again, names are something to do with civilised behaviour. In theory, you know, they are uh, there for people to communicate with us. And if we're sort of living on our own on an isolated island, we, we wouldn't need them at all. And then, of course, the chapter ends with the assertion that the boy with the birthmark on his face is killed. Uh, in the fire. So it's a very dark chapter and as I say the, the battle throughout the chapter is this um, inherent desire to have rules and regulations and government and control which you know idealistically should be democratic with equality and all the rest of it and yet beneath that lurking beneath that is man's inherent evil and the fact that everybody wants to um, you know be mean and, and kind of uh, aggressive and uh, just it's a horrible sort of uh, you know a horrible side to people that is starting to come out in the book.